Kia ora, 12 and 13. This is the third video I'm making in a row looking at trig identities. So this one doesn't use any complex numbers, but we're going to try and find a different way to find the cosine of 18 degrees. So I strongly recommend that you at least have a look at the first two videos because they are based on De Moivre's theorem and getting an expression for cos of 5 theta. Okay, but I'm going to pretend we've never done that and suppose that you're just sitting in the exam or in real life trying to solve this problem of what is the cosine of 18 degrees. So I want to go through what comes into my head when I see that. So if I'm looking at 18 degrees, I think that 18 fives are 90. So I'm going to try and use compound angle formulae and maybe double angle formulae to do something with that. So 5 is equal to 2 plus 3. So let's let theta be 18 degrees. And my goal here is to end up with cosine of 18 degrees. But actually, if I end up with sine of 18 degrees, that's OK too, because I can switch back and forth between these by using some funky version of Pythagoras. And that's actually what I'm going to end up doing here. So I'm looking at the 5, and I'm thinking I can break that up into 2 and 3. So let's start like this, 2 theta plus 3 theta is equal to 5 theta, which is 90 degrees. So how about we try this? 2 theta is equal to 90 degrees minus 3 theta. That means that if I do the same thing to both sides, so if I take the sine of both sides, this must be true. Okay, and we're also helped by knowing that theta is in the first quadrant. So we can say that the sine of 90 minus 3 theta is equal to the cosine of 3 theta. So I'm now starting to get somewhere. I know that sine of 2 theta can be rewritten as 2 sine theta cos theta. This can be dealt with, but it's going to be a little bit painful. So I'm going to now attack the right-hand side and try to get that into something more useful. So eventually we, we want to get an equation that we can solve like this. So we're going to end up with sine of 2 theta minus cos of 3 theta equals 0. And I've already seen that this bit will simplify, so now we're working on this bit. So this part is not difficult at all. Um, this is very level 3 triggy. It's just a bit mucky. So cos of 3 theta, I can break out into cos of 2 theta plus theta. So using my compound angle formula, I get this cos of 2 theta cos of theta minus sine of 2 theta sine of theta. Now, this is one of the formulae that you'll always get on a formula sheet, but we use this one so often that we should have it at our fingertips. In other words, you should know it by the time you get to the scholarship exam. So cos of 2 theta... I've always got choices with where to go with this one. Um, so I'm going to take potluck and try 1 minus 2 sine squared theta cos of theta. My goal, remember, is to end up with no compound angles anywhere in my problem. Right? So here the sine 2 theta is going to be minus 2 sine theta cos theta times this. So let's see how we're going. Well, we've got cos of theta minus 2 sine squared theta cos theta minus 2 sine squared theta cos theta. So that equals cos of theta minus 4 cos of theta sine squared theta. Right. Now, not clear what to do with that next except that the only reason we figured this thing out was to chuck it back into this equation here. Okay, so I'm going to go back up the screen and just jog your memory with what we're doing. So we started out with theta is 18, and we're trying to eventually end up with a sine of 18 or a cos of 18. So we got to here, where sine of 2 theta was equal to cos of this. Our goal is to make sure that we end up with... Oh, what happened there? Hang on. We don't want a 2 theta, we don't want a 3 theta, we just want everything in terms of theta. And then we're going to try and solve. Okay, so now we've got down to here. So we've got sine of 2 theta 
minus cos of 3 theta is equal to 0. So it's time to substitute all the bits in. So 2 sine theta cos theta minus cos theta plus 4 cos theta sine squared theta is equal to 0. Right, now to solve that, it's starting to look quite good. We've got a common factor coming through now of cos theta. We've got no double or triple angles in there anymore. So we can take out the common factor of cos theta. Let's see, what can I do next? Right, so cos of theta times 2 sine theta minus 1 plus 4 sine squared theta is equal to 0. Now, theta is 18 degrees, so we know that cos of theta is not equal to 0, so it's okay to divide through by cos theta. So we can now write 4 sine squared theta plus 2 sine theta minus 1 is equal to 0. And look, we've got another disguised quadratic. So let sine of theta equal x, 4x squared plus 2x minus 1 is equal to 0. So at this point you're probably going, but, but she wanted to get cos of 18, not sine of 18. But that's okay. We're going to get the cos 18 easily, reasonably easily, from the sine of 18. Solving this now, we use our quadratic formula. I always write that out before I start, because you really don't want to screw up when you've got this far through the problem. So x is equal to negative 2 plus or minus... 4 minus 4 times 4 times negative 1 over 8. So, cleaning this up, negative 2 plus or minus root 20 over 8. And that gives me x is equal to negative 1 plus or minus root 5 divided by 4. And that's because root 20 is equal to 2 root 5. Now, we know that x is greater than 0, so we can reject the negative root, and so x must equal negative 1 plus root 5 over 4. So we're kind of happy because we've now found an exact expression for sine of 18 degrees, and it's this. It's root 5 minus 1 over 4. So we've got that, but we don't want that. We want the cosine of 18 degrees. Two ways to go here. We can use this, cos squared of x plus sine squared of x is equal to 1. Or we can do my favourite, which is to chuck it into a triangle and see what's going on. So we've got 18 degrees here, and we know that the sine of that is equal to the opposite side over the hypotenuse. So we can put those two on. So here we've got root 5 minus 1. And here we've got 4. And we're going to call that other side y. So we can now write that y squared is equal to 4 squared minus that side squared. So y squared is 16 minus 5 minus 2 root 5 plus 1. So y squared works out to be 10 plus 2 root 5. So we can go back up to our triangle and write that on. That gives me, whoops, it's the square root of that. So y is equal to the square root of 10 plus 2 root 5, giving me um, cosine of 18 is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse, so root 10 plus 2 root 5 over 4. Now, let's see if that all works itself through. Pretty sure it does. Yep. Now, what you might be interested in is how come that looks quite different from what we had above. So when we did this way back in part one, we ended up with cos of 18 was equal to um, this. So with a bit of manipulation, you, you can end up with them being the same thing. Um, we might just play around with that now. So here, 
we can put the square root thing over the whole thing. And now we can see that if we divide everything through by 2, we get back to the answer we had in the other video. Okay, so that's how you do um, exact value problems like that using your trig compound angles. Um, it's really nice to be able to do them using Moivre's theorem as well. Basically, you want to have as many techniques um, at your fingertips as you can. Thanks for watching, and if you find another way to do it, there is one really, really cool way left that I haven't done. Just leave me a comment.